If you struggle with getting your dog to come back to you, whether it be outside, inside, high distraction, low distraction, whatever it may be, I'm going to be telling you exactly how we train a perfect um, recall from zero to hero. Stay tuned to the video, good. it's gonna be really helpful. We'll see you there. Before we start training our dog to actually have a perfect recall, we need to understand how are we going to encourage our dog to respond to us 100% of the time? How are we going to be a leader as our dog owner, as our dog parent to our dog to build that relationship of our dog constantly responding to our commands no matter the situation? And this is something that I see dog owners struggle with every single day is they lack the leadership and the consistency and the approach while they're working with their dog. They go outside with a bunch of treats or, you know, I've even heard of a ton of people using cut up steak to a very high value item to try to get their dog to recall. And we are missing the entire approach when we do that. Yes, using high value treats is something that we do want to use when we're shaping behaviors at first, but once a behavior is shaped and once our dog fully understands the command that we're asking of them, well, Oftentimes we completely remove the treats very suddenly. We want our dog to be responding to us because we are saying something, not because we have an actual item that our dog wants. That is just bribery. And if that's our relationship with our dog, the second we don't have something or the second something else has higher value, well, all of our commands, all of our recall, all of our training is going to be out the window. This is something that I think a lot of dog owners need to take a step back and really understand the difference between behavior modification and training. Those are two different activities. Be training, when we're training our dog, as I said, right, we are using positive reinforcement. We're using treats or kibble to shape the behaviors. But once our dog has the behavior down, we then move over to behavior modification, which is our dog is actually making decisions on their own looking at different items, creating values for different items, and making decisions based off that. We handle those two things completely separately. And yes, in an ideal world, we could just walk out and have completely controlled environments wherever we go and use positive reinforcement only. But in the real world, that's not actually going to happen. And that's why we need to work on behavior modification on actually responding to the commands that our dog already knows because we taught our dog the command. If we can use behavior modification to decrease the value of say sniffing, you know, following the scent trail or seeing the squirrel and running at it, or even playing with another dog in a time where our, we don't want our dog to play with another dog. If we can decrease the value of all of those things, well, our dog is going to start looking up to us significantly more for, hey, what do I do? And we are going to create and make ourselves a significantly better leader and commander and parent for our dog and our dog is going to be a lot more responsive. So I want you as a dog owner to work on restructuring your relationship and communication with your dog. And what I mean by that is, there are things that your dog wants to do and there are things that your dog must do. And we want recall to be in the group of things that your dog must do. If you are out with your dog in a field and you try to recall your dog and your dog looks at you and continues doing what they were doing, they know the command most likely in this situation but they are just deciding not to because whatever they're doing has higher value. That is probably because what you have has very low value, you might not have treats with you, but it's also because they want to do that and they are continuing to do it. So starting today, we are, if we give our dog a command, we are going to hold them accountable for their command. And the vast majority of people who are watching this video are going to have to use a long lead or a leash at first while we're working with our dog to reinforce the behavior of you recalling when I tell you to recall. That, that also has to include a little bit of positive punishment of corrections when our dog completely ignores us. We are not correcting our dog heavily. We are encouraging our dog and making things slightly uncomfortable when they ignore us and encouraging them when they come back to us and showing them that that is the proper behavior 100% of the time. This is why when we are training dogs, we don't just 
you know, we, we perfect the recall in the living room, out, you know, low distractions. We don't just send our dog out to a dog park and expect them to recall. We have to build up the behavior of the recall in higher distraction areas with a long lead or an e-collar, if that is right for you, doesn't have to be, but we have to perfect the behavior as well as make it clear to our dog, when I tell you to come, come means come, because if you tell your dog to recall, their, their recall command and they turn around, look at you and walk the other way, they are practically giving you the middle finger and that is a unhealthy relationship between you and your dog. You want your dog to be responsive 100% of the time and that is how we get that 100% response. So what do we do here? Well, what I want you to do to start out building the perfect recall, start indoors in your living room, not much going on and shape the behavior. If you have had no training before with your dog, well, this might take a couple days or you know even up to a week. But what we wanna do is have treats, have kibble, whatever your dog likes and work on recall, have them on a leash and show them when I say come or when I say here or when I say touch, that is what that means. That we do this, you get treats, awesome. Then we want to slowly start adding distractions, put going in new you know, environments, but we don't wanna take that jump too quickly. We need to slowly make these steps. And if you add distractions and your dog is struggling and getting less than, you know, getting their commands right less than 50% of the time, well, we want to take a little bit of a step back. I'll give you a quick example. When I'm training dogs, sometimes we can go from my living room to outside in the field where there's not too much going on. You've seen a ton of videos in the field, but we can, we can take that step and a dog kills it, right? They are doing great with that. With other dogs, we have to go from my living room to my backyard, to my front yard, to the sidewalk, to the field, right? We have to take different steps. And it all depends on your dog, but we want to slowly increase the generalization of that recall command in different situations. Then once we have added distractions and generalized the command, we know our dog knows the command. We are taking our treat pouch and we are getting rid of it. We do not need to give our dog any treats from here on out unless we are shaping a new behavior, but we go out with some sort of tool. Sometimes this is a flat collar. Sometimes this is a slip lead. Sometimes this is a prong collar. Sometimes this is an e-collar. Depending on what you want your dog to do, that depends on the tool. But we use a tool to often with, for example, a long lead to let our dog go, right? We want them to be, to build some distance, get a little far away from us and we want to recall our dog and see what they do. If they ignore us, we are adding pressure. Again, whether that be, that be with our long lead or the e-collar, very small amount of pressure, and then encouraging our dog to get back to us and rewarding them for coming back to us. We are going to continue adding those distractions in this more balanced approach of, hey, you don't pay attention to me, I'm gonna make it just the slightest bit uncomfortable for you. And our dog is going to start looking up to us every time we give them a command and our words are going to mean significantly more. Once we're there, well, our command is probably, you know, 80, 90% of the way there. We then have to, that last 10% is, is the hardest part. And that is the part that takes the longest where we need to generalize different situations. A squirrel running by, it's harder to set up these environments where we can set our dog up for success and failure in this last 10 or 20% because it's hard to set up a squirrel running by or a dog or whatever it may be. But we want to continue practicing our recall command in this, in this case in those higher distraction environments. And within a week or two, you should have reshaped your entire relationship with your dog and have a perfect recall. But the thing that you definitely don't want to do is to release your dog off the leash too soon. Try to recall your dog. Your dog looks at you and ignore you because that is shaping that behavior of ignoring you. And then we have to bring in some more behavior modification. So if we can prevent these mistakes as much as possible, well, our dog is going to respond to us significantly more and have a perfect recall. This is how I get my dogs to have a perfect recall no matter where we are. I recall my dogs in very high distraction environments with tons of people, tons of dogs, tons of squirrels, right? Whatever it may be, I can recall my dog wherever they are without using pressure because we have created the 
value and the incentive structure that you respond to me no matter what. And your dog's gonna look up to you, be a lot happier. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button. Happy to answer any questions. We'll see you in the next one.